Hans Niemann and Arjun Arigesi. Make a note of these names. They are going to play against each other many, many times in the future. Both of them are born in 2003. Hans on 20th of June, Arjun, Arjun on 3rd of September. So Hans is slightly younger than Arjun. Both amazing players. And their game in the third round of the Tepe, Sigaman and Co Cup was something that I was looking forward to with great excitement. Arjun was leading the tournament with two out of two. Hans on one out of two. So let's have a look at this game. Hans with the white pieces opens with d4. Arjun plays the Slav. Knight f3, knight f6, e3 and bishop to f5. Black plans to put his pawn on e6. Bishop is outside the pawn chain. Knight c3, e6. So black would have a very nice position. But only that white pursues that bishop. Bishop e4, f3, bishop g6. And now you put your queen on b3, attacking the b7 pawn. There are two ways to play this position. One is to play queen to c7. The other to queen with queen to b6, offering a trade. Arjun went queen c7, more fighting, bishop d2, bishop e7, takes, white has now the bishop pair, but black says he is extremely solid here because all his pawns and pieces are nicely positioned. The knight will go to d7, later he will try to go c5. King b1, knight bd7, h4. White tells to black that, look, you cannot castle here because the moment you castle i'm just going to hurl my pawns and open up the position so arjun says well my king is quite okay in the center right now i don't need to castle so he breaks in the center with c5 queen to b3 preempting uh, b5 uh, oops b5 would have attacked the queen so the queen moves back takes takes and i think this is the position where <clears throat> you see the imbalances coming out beautifully because first of all, white has an isolated pawn, which means that the d5 square is a nice outpost for black. However, what black is struggling with right now is to find a good place for his king. Even long castle might not be a good idea because rook c1 and there is direct pressure here. But in some way, if black is able to exchange off the queens, then he would be doing very well. So I'm imagining a scenario where let's say knight to b6, and I, I'm just trying to make some moves. Uh, g4 is logical. Knight d5 takes. This are, these are not good moves, but I'm just making them. If some position like this happens, and then you go queen b6, take, take. Black will be more than happy in this position because his knight will sit on d5. He can then put his king here or rook to c8. You know, it will be easier to play. So Arjun goes for queen b6, which is a nice move offering a queen trade. He is envisioning that position where the queens are off the board. Han says no queen trade, queen a4. And now Arjun here plays a move which is very understandable after what we have discussed, but is a very bad move. He plays queen to c6. Uh, and it's like you want to do something which is the queen trade at all costs but what at what cost you know that also you have to see so after queen takes c6 b takes c6 what has happened in the position is that two pawns have become extremely weak it was a little bit surprising that hans went bishop b5 here he went slightly tactical in this position here he understood he can't take here a8 is hanging but after queen d6 i think arjun would have been back in the game because let's say you go back uh, here, bishop d3, then after rook c8, black is doing pretty okay. So, queen d6 was necessary. I also tried to analyze this line with knight e4, knight e4, fe4, giving a strong center. Rook c8 attacking the bishop. If you go back, I have b5, which is very strong. So takes takes and i think such a position is just equal but queen c8 bishop d3 and once again arjun goes queen c6 he's like no i want to exchange the queen then hans is like okay get your way you you do it 
takes and now knight a4 very cool move actually knight e4 was also possible but knight a4 and now this is a weakness rook c1 putting pressure here <clears throat> well arjun might have wanted to play c5 perhaps here to get rid of one of his weaknesses but after something like this and rook c1 it turns out that this opening up of the position favors the bishops and also white has the queen side majority so my question here is that how should black have continued because arjun's move queen c6 clearly falls short you know you just take it so i tried to analyze a bit and i came to the conclusion that rook c8 would have been nice because you want to do the same thing with queen c6 but then take with the rook okay white goes g4 i think this is the most logical because once you go queen c6 after takes takes white has a strong move here can you find it g5 so two moves now if knight h5 then d5 opening up the position in the set king is in the center you have the bishop pair d5 is a perfect move knight d5 takes takes and f4 now the bishop will come here attack this pawn again white is clearly better but to g4 i found a nice move i mean just trying to analyze queen b4 offering a queen trade and if you don't trade the queens and you go back then you lose the pawn without much compensation so you take take and if you play now a3 i take if bishop c3 then um, knight gets a great square on d5 so you try to take with the pawn but after knight b6 i have one knight coming here other knight coming here black should be completely fine so in this way maybe there are some tactical ideas with d5 here let's say knight takes d5 <coughs> knight takes d5 bishop d2 rook d2 e d5 rook d5 but again such a position i feel that black should be able to hold here with accurate play maybe one idea is to go knight f8 or knight c5 and put the knight on e6 when uh, should be able to equalize so with all this analysis we understand that queen c6 was not good but as we see in the game neiman plays beautifully now look at this he first attacks this pawn weakness okay arjun finds a tactical way to defend against it because now the bishop is hanging and the pawn is protected so hans goes back and now comes the move knight b8 you can already sense things are not going black's way but g3 uh, defending this pawn so that the rook can move away king e7 knight c5 rook a7 f4 rook d8 rook d1 a5 bishop f3 and knight e5 and arjun thought well okay my position is at least playable i have a strong square here but rook e1 knight d7 and nice move by hans Na very nice move keeping the knights because once you trade this let's imagine such a position then black is very solid here the knight is needed for white to create play in the position so king d6 rook e2 rook a6 rook c2 again putting pressure here rook c8 defending b3 and this is the moment where arjun should have taken his chance so black to play what would you do knight to b4 would have been a great move we were talking about the exchange of the knights and this is where um, i think arjun would have great chances next his knight goes from f6 to d5 i'm sure arjun saw this i am not sure why he did not play it maybe he would have been afraid of something like very tactical here with d5 um, because you can't take with the pawn your rook is hanging and if you take with the pawn then bishop d5 <clears throat> position is opening up f7 is hanging you take this uh check here on d2 and now king e4 because if king e6 there is rook e1 check also quite dangerous but okay that's also playable king e4 rook d7 and uh, here you can start with rook c8 creating some threats here and if you go rook c2 then after rook a7 i have defended myself otherwise if you take on f7 i take on a2 and the balance is maintained so i guess something in this line is what arjun could have missed 
as it is he played the move knight e3 but after uh, knight b2 good move you will see that hans managed to play g4 which is a nice move you can't take on h4 which is what arjun might have been counting on because after bishop h1 the knight is kind of trapped here so arjun had to go here knight d5 f5 and here's a small question for you what happens to ef5 well i hope you spotted this checkmate here with the king right in the center of the board because now that the e file is opened he cannot move on that file rook c8 knight c4 king e7 h5 g5 i think here also uh, black could have improved his play slightly um, i'll come to that move g5 it's your move now what should white play you see this is weakness correct you create another weakness here and in order to create a weakness you must fix it with a4 nice move by neiman this now becomes second weakness this is a weakness he's planning to take and create another weakness with so many weaknesses it's going to be very difficult for black to play uh, the move that i was recommending is a4 just so that he cannot fix it and it becomes very messy with something like this that arjun has to go for if he wants to survive <clears throat> but he went g5 a4 knight f4 rook b8 and uh, you can see how neiman converts this without too many difficulties g6 takes he arjun gets back his pawn but now the rook has infiltrated from the h file now the other rook is planning to enter so black is just completely boxed in and uh, well it's it would be a mate here but the rook is protecting so you play bishop f5 blocking that check again threatening to take here bishop f7 takes this nice tactic check and now uh, this is hanging rook takes a6 but he chops off another pawn and here arjun resigns because he would be exchange and pawn down but a great great game by neiman he showed why he is one of the most talented youngsters out there and i can't wait for uh, you know this rivalry to keep building up in the years to come uh, right now after three rounds we have two leaders in the tournament neiman and erigesi both on two out of three let's hope uh, that this tournament keeps getting exciting with four more rounds to go this is sagar shah signing off bye bye